the Sidor presentation, the sweet sound of young children reciting to Philot that have been an integral part of our Mesorah for thousands of years. The culmination of a full year of teaching these young members of Klal Yisrael the importance of davening and planting them on a path that will help them grow into productive B'nai and B'not Torah. The annual Sidor presentation at the Jewish Educational Center in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and of course, the hundreds of weddings that he performed in the community were always a great source of nachat to Rav Pinchas Mordechai Taitz, Zichrono Livracha, the founder and spiritual leader of the JEC for over 60 years. To him, these celebrations were yet another affirmation that his life's dream, the creation of a vibrant Jewish community which could sustain and foster excellence in an educational system, had come to fruition. A place where his three L's of Torah, learning, living, and loving Torah, could be realized. The JEC is a living memorial to the greatness and vision of Rav Tites. It is in his memory that we dedicate this tribute. Rav Pinchas Mordechai Tites came to the United States from Riga in 1933 along with Rav Eliyahu Meir Block to raise money for the Tel's yeshiva. It was during that tour that he met Bessie Prail, daughter of the late Rav Eliza Meir Prail, who had been the chief rabbi of Elizabeth. The subsequent courtship and marriage to Bessie Prail not only prompted Rav Tites to permanently move to America, but also made him heir to the chief rabbinate of Elizabeth. Uh, rabbi Tites was a bright young man and had um, uh, good ideas as far as education and uh, uh, shul attendance and the Feldmans were very enthusiastic about his plans and were anxious to support him in anything that he wanted to undertake. In 1935, Rav Tites established the Rabbi E. M. Prail Talmud Torah. It later became the Yavna Yeshiva, which was established on Elmora Avenue and today is next to the JEC synagogue. We need your children. We need your grandchildren. Make sure that your children and grandchildren fill up these holes, utilize the opportunities given them. Only then will we be satisfied with our achievement here tonight. My father, Zechariah Levracha, was creative. He was Kemayim HaMizgaber, a an ever-strengthening and flowing uh, spring, constantly having ideas and thoughts for projects, some local, some national, some international in scope. First and foremost, of course, was the establishing of the community as a modern Torah community. To me, I was always impressed with the fact that this young rabbi in 1940, when the JEC was founded and organized, had the vision and the dream to declare that it should become a model community for others to emulate. At a time when there wasn't even a minion of Shomrei Shabbos in the community, to have this kind of a dream, to me, was one of the most impressive of the plans that my father had throughout his life. The Rav believed that a yeshiva education should always be available for every Jewish child. I made an appointment to the Rav. He asked me my, the name of my son. I told him, Ila. He said, you send them to school, you pay as much as you could. My son went to school, he enjoyed very much. And I thought to myself that I owe something to the JC. Not so much for the schooling that they gave my son but how the Rav treated me the first day. In 1955, the first Jewish high school in New Jersey, the Rabbi Tites Masifta Academy was established. It would serve as a fertile breeding ground for future Judaic as well as academic scholars. We intend to utilize this house 
to give our children, as I stated this morning, the best of American education, the best of Hebrew education, blend it in such a manner that we will create a proud, learned, observant, dedicated, full of love, full of higher and loftier ideals, with a sense of higher values in life. Yeah, there's one, there's one muscle that uh, Rabbi Taitz always says over in the name of his father, and I've been hearing it for years, and I use it even on when we have Israel night with the, with the parents coming down to discuss the boys continuing on, that Rav Taitz used to say that it says in the, it says in the Kriya Shema, uh, al levavchem, not el levavchem. And what is the point of this? That you can place the Torah on the heart, you can't place it in the heart, to the heart. You can't make it happen. So our job is always to try as much as we possibly can to put as much Torah emphasis of the warmth of Torah, as I said before, in the other aspect, to give them that Torah. And then as they travel through life, as they go on to Eretz which almost all of our Talmudim do, then they're able, the Torah falls in. The environment makes it possible. Rav Tights was always an advocate of women learning Torah. And in 1963, he took the dramatic step of opening the Bruria High School for Girls. Rabbi Tights called the school Bruria. It was an unusual name, and it still is an unusual name for a girls' school. Obviously, he had a vision when he called it Bruria. Bruria was one of the best-known female scholars of many a year ago, the wife of Rabbi Mayer. And this is what he mandated to me when I came in. Make scholars out of these girls. I want them to be well-educated, well-rounded in all areas, and be able to take their place in society as leaders in the future generation of Klav Yisrael. Today, Bruria is one of the country's premier Jewish girls' high schools, serving hundreds of young women from all over the metropolitan area. While the JEC was growing academically, the community was exploding with hundreds of religious families attracted to Elizabeth by Rav Tights' leadership and reputation. The reason we moved to Elizabeth was very simple. It was a matter of a practical reason. When my children started going to school, they lived in Newark, New Jersey, lay down in Hillside, spoke to some of my friends, and they said, well, where are you going to move from here? So I said, well, the only choice, the best choice would be Elizabeth. I said, what, Elizabeth, you have only one, the whole city is run under one auspices, under the tides, Robert Heights, and you have no choices of schools, you're limiting yourself. I said, that's exactly what I want. I wanted leadership, that's the only way you can accomplish something. Rav Tights became the epicenter of Torah for Elizabeth Jewry, teaching his congregants to live Torah and setting couples on the road to leading Torah-full lives. He participated in their smachat, and he shared in the pain of their sorrows. But I had the case where I had to put my mother in the old age home. And it was just before some kind of holiday. And uh, the rabbi must have seen, because I sit in the first row, but I sit upstairs, he must have seen me cry. When I came out, Almost everybody left already because in order to come from the first row, you are the last one. The rabbi and Mrs. Tights were waiting on the step of the shul for me. The Rav also spread Torah throughout the world with his weekly Dafa Shavua broadcast made over WEVD and syndicated worldwide. Lomer Lernen Ablat Gemurah Daf HaShavua Harav Tights the show culminated each year with hundreds of people attending a live broadcast. Rav Tights' influence, however, stretched far beyond the Elizabeth community and the United States. It was his commitment to Soviet Jewry that helped thousands of Russian Jews recapture the essence of their religious and spiritual history. In 1964, he made the first of 22 trips behind the Iron Curtain to teach and encourage Jews in the Soviet Union. He involved the entire community in this vital work. In Elizabeth, Rav Tights had built a model community that was sought out by many religious and political leaders. For Elizabeth today, 
insist on Yiddishkeit, demands Yiddishkeit, loves Yiddishkeit, not Judaism, not Soros. They will insist on 100% Shulchanor of Yiddishkeit from our throne of the Union today without any change, without any compromises. We are nine generations Rabon in our family. Everybody said there's not going to be an Orthodox synagogue left. Who are you going to be a rabbi for? And they were all wrong, and Rabbi Tights was right. Not to give up on the Jewish people and the Jewish dream. Not to have a moment's doubt as to who is right in the world. Rev Tights was a charismatic leader. He was a dynamic personality. He was a man who endeared himself to all who knew him. I'm sure that history will record, Rabbi, that you are a man of great vision, a man of a, gr a great dreamer, a man who made his dreams come true. And to that extent, Rabbi, we are very much in your debt. Thank you. Rev Tights leaves behind six children and numerous grandchildren. The mantle of his great rabbinic leadership has now been passed to his son, Rabbi Eliza Meir Tights. The famous question is asked, When will my actions reach those of my forebears? It's not only that we're going to try to reach all of the things and accomplishments that my father did, it's that we're going to try to maintain and preserve and also develop it so that it flourishes and goes on and come up with new projects and new ways of spreading Torah. And although we can't fill my father's shoes, we can hope to follow in his footsteps and build upon it. The loss of Rav Tights's presence is deeply felt by the entire community. But in the hearts and minds of thousands of men, women, and children whose lives he touched, his memory will always live on. Remember, it must have been about three years ago, just around this time of year as we're approaching June, and our nursery school is working very hard practicing for their advancement ceremonies. And that was the day the Beit Midrash was packed with parents and video cameras and grandparents. And in the front door walked the Rav coming in with that very special twinkle in his eye, sat down near me. And the pride that he had, the nachas that he had, these were his kinderlach. As little as they were, they were already out on the derech. Rav Tights was a man of action and a man of great warmth. A man who knew that to bring others close to Hashem, you must set an example. Rav Tights was a man who came to a young Jewish Elizabeth and made her a queen, a man who taught others to love Torah. It was the Rav's life's work to see the JEC grow and flourish, and grow it did to become one of the premier yeshivot in America. We continue to show an example to the Jewish community how to build Torah, Eretz Israel, and Jewish life. In the Rav's chut and inspiration, it is up to us to ensure that the valuable legacy he bequeathed will never be lost. <laughs>